Hey guys, so today I want to talk about candida. So what candida is, is a yeast, um, and everyone has candida, but what happens is when you eat a lot of sugary things or processed foods, or if you had an eating disorder, or lots of different things, a lot of caffeine can cause an overgrowth of candida. And then what happens is now you have an imbalance in your stomach, and uh, yeast is a fungus. So they don't exactly even know what a fungus is. Um, they don't have a true classification for it. It's just, those are all just grouped into fungus, uh, the things they don't know what they are. So it's a very, very interesting thing. And what happens when you're suffering from candida overgrowth is you get so tired. You get extreme exhaustion and lethargy and- oh. um, Tell me you, about it. A gyrus is from oh. right now. And you uh, just feel, awful and your stomach bloats oh. one really bad thing is you get bloated all over like you just feel really bloated um it's a big problem with the gmos too the genetically modified food so what we found is when we took out the genetically modified organisms because we were um, still eating chicken well chicken even though it's organic they feed the chicken uh corn well corn no longer is GMO free. Even if it says GMO free, it's not because the seed has been modified. So many times there is no original uh, corn seed. It's all genetically modified. So once we took out the chicken, we're just now to beef, then we are finally able to uh, get this candida overgrowth um, dealt with. Well, I was sick for about a month and a half now. So I've barely been doing um, any posts. On Twitter or YouTube or anything or on a website on my blog so this one the today is like the first day I've been feeling way better and it took so long now Jedi Rich is behind me because he uh, waited a little longer than me to stop eating like the eggs and the chicken um, and so I did just all protein beef and bone broth soup for the last like month in order to get rid of this candida and it's Oh, it feels so good now, but I was so, so sick. You get flu-like symptoms, you get headaches, nausea. Um, oh, gosh, there's so many things. The, the biggest thing that was just the insane lethargy. Like, you're so lethargic, it's ridiculous. Like, you just, I slept for like, like I'd sleep for like 18 hours and then wake up and want to go right back to sleep. Um, so it was just horrible, and Jai Rich is experiencing that right now. And I just wanted to um, tell anyone if you, you know, if you're suffering from this, look into candida overgrowth. If you're like, you can't explain why you might be gaining weight, why you can't lose weight, why you're always hungry. Oh yeah, candida is a big reason why you still feel hungry all the time, like if you're eating, because candida is yeast that lives off of sugar, but it's stored in your fat cells. So if you eat a very high fat diet and a high sugar diet, you end up with a huge candida overgrowth because you end up with you eat the sugar, but then the uh, it, you have to watch your fat content too because they love to live in the fat. I know fat doesn't equal fat, but like if too much fat can equal fat, so you got to keep your sugar down, and you definitely got to keep your fat down. So um, eat high protein, and that seems to finally get rid of them. But it takes a long, long time, but it's worth it if you're. Suffering from it, uh, send me a message. I can tell you more about it. It, it's it's crazy. I'll I'll clip at the a part in this movie showing how I felt when I was uh, suffering from it. As you can see, it's just like insane. I had no energy. I could barely talk. So thanks, guys. Great job, Sam. Others wanted to be. The date and time. What's this all about? This is um, Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. We're talking about candida and candida overgrowth and bulimia and uh, about my recovery uh, road um, to getting better from bulimia and getting the candida out of my stomach. You gotta cut down on your sugar and the fat, so you gotta like do things like bone marrow stew and stuff is what I recommend. And, protein diet because um, they live off sugar and they live in fat. Oh shit. 
answer a lot of questions. Yeah, so like they stay in your fat cells and then they reproduce and grow with sugar, but like you gotta cut back on your fat to get them out of your fat cells. And then you gotta cut down on your sugar. To and it takes a long them. process. Yeah. I've been doing it well. Well, I stopped bulimia a couple of years ago. I, I did it a couple more times, but I originally stopped it like three years ago, I think. And then I, I had a couple of uh, times that I did it again periodically. But then in the last year, at least, I haven't done anything because I remember a little bit in the cave. So over a year now, I haven't thrown up at all. Um, but the first two years, it was a lot of, man, it was a lot of bloating, a lot of bloating. And then this year has been more, um, trying to get rid of the candy. That first we didn't even know what was going on when I first stopped being blue. Remember that? Oh, because I was eating sugar. So I would just, oh, the bloating would be so bad. It'd be like, I'll be debilitated I mean it's kind of like now because the energy but like a lot more painful <laughs> it was like I couldn't move because it hurt so bad in my stomach so it's a long hell battle do don't be bulimic is at the end of the day oh right well, yeah what do you have to get the parents that have kids that are toying on with bulimia they discovered and, and to if, or if you're yourself a new a young person who just discovered an easy way to be able to drink your frappuccinos and not gain weight, what do you have to say about that? Don't do it. It's not worth it. I did it for 15 years, and now I've been suffering for the last three years, just trying to get my body just back normal so I can digest properly, and that I don't get sick every day from this candida uh, and bloat like. What happens is you bloat like a pregnant woman. Like you'll look like you're like nine months pregnant. It's not. It's not good. So you can't really do anything. It's debilitating because it's like so uncomfortable. And then you just have no energy, and you get sick too. Like you get flu-like symptoms. So you just want to sleep. You get headaches, nausea. Um, yeah, like a super tiredness. I mean, like and foggy headedness too. Like. So it's hard. That's why it's hard for me to do things. It's not just that my stomach hurts. It's like my whole being is kind of like uh, like my brain is foggy. I have a headache, and I just feel tired. So it really bogs down. So oh, the point is, it's not worth it. Like eat normally. Don't cheat it by being bulimic because unless you want to deal with it for like three years afterwards. And I'm telling you, it's, it seems like, oh, that'll never happen. I used to think that too, but eventually bulimia stops working. So either whether it be you die or whether it be you just aren't able, like you've spent all your money or people put you in rehab or whatever it is, like eventually it's going to stop working. Um, like, because it's such an all consuming thing and it's so bad for your health. So once it stops working, well, then you're going to have to recover and recovery takes a long time so just don't start it and if you just started well then you should be fine to just stop it's like the longer you do it the harder your recovery is going to be so if you're doing it now stop um, because it's not going to get better and it's not going to be like oh I'll stop later but, but how does a person stop because when they try to stop what happens is that they well every time they go to eat they have the urge to throw up so they're 17 years old they've been doing it for a year now they, I mean, how long well, is it? You have to do organics is the one thing that'll really help. If you do organics, then you don't really want to throw those up. But yeah, the first year I had to pretty much just hold back throwing up. Like I had to make myself not throw. Like I could throw up without, I, I didn't even stick my finger down my throat. I could just voluntarily throw up anytime. So usually like as soon as I ate, like I needed to throw up because it just was already ready. Like I didn't even, uh, you know, I would just put my head down and it would just come out. So, um, for me, I had to, uh, literally force it down. Like I would eat and then I have to lay in bed and just resist like, like I did that like, gag and stuff and, uh, throw up in my mouth sometimes a little bit, but I wouldn't go throw up. 
So it was not easy. It's not easy at all, unfortunately. I wish I could say it's easy, but it's not. So if you started it, you have to stop because it only gets harder and harder to stop and harder to recover. But yeah, it's not it's not in any way gonna be easy, unfortunately. That's the thing, you never wanna hear that if you're doing something. You don't wanna hear that the recovery is tough. But that's the reality. That's like that you wanna hear easy and stuff, you know? But it's not. It's not easy and it only gets worse. So it's like, don't think I'll just be blaming for a couple more years and then stop. Well, you're only gonna make it worse when you actually have to stop.